Hey, what's up you guys? The Curious Owl here, and today I have my July 2023 wrap up. So July did not end up being as productive as I wanted it to be initially, but I still made a lot of great progress with a lot of things that I'm very proud of. So I guess let's just go ahead and get into it. So for my stats for the month of July, I had read a total of 2,600 pages and listened to 31 hours and 58 minutes worth of audiobooks. Um, of the books I read, there were six of them that were physical, two ebooks, and three audiobooks for a total of 11 books read. And seven of them were from my own personal library, and four of them were borrowed from some other means. Then as far as star ratings, I had seven of the books that were five stars, three four stars, and unfortunately I did have one two star this month. So first I ended up finishing my read of The Battle Drum by Sarah El Arifi. This was a carryover from June, and this was my first five star of the month. My god, this was absolutely amazing. I am so excited for book three when it comes out next year. I cannot wait. Um, I definitely am going to need to reread this and The Final Strife again when it comes to the, the release of book three. Next, I had also carried over from June, Moses Man of the Mountain by Zora Neale Hurston. This also was a five out of five stars for me. I really loved this one. This one is one of my more favorite Zora books because I really just love this idea of combining the idea of Moses and also like other biblical stories um, in terms of the different cultural ways in which he was looked at. It was a really, really cool story and I really liked the way it was written. I loved the way that it progressed and I felt like by the end of it, there was this really big payoff for me. This was another five star read, which I was surprised by because of the fact that for one, this is a sequel and two, I was just really surprised in the way that things kind of happen by the end of this book but that was Girls of Storm and Shadow by Natasha Nong. This is the sequel to Girls of Paper and Fire and I just loved this. Like there is no second book syndrome here for this book for me personally. I can definitely see where everybody else you know that reads this would say that there's you know a lot of dragging aspects of the book that it's very slow um, but for me personally I fell in love with book one and this really just I think got more into what I was looking for in the relationship between the two female characters in the story and the ending of this was actually really great and so much so that I ended up then picking up book three later in the month which I'll talk about later. The next book I completed was Payback's a Witch by Lana Harper. The smut in this romance was absolute perfection. Another five out of five stars. I was on a five star like roll in the beginning of July and I just I loved this so much. My mom had read most of it and said that she thought I would really like this and so I decided to pick it up when my mom had picked it for the mom pick um, with my TBR and I just fell in love with this story. I fell in love with the world. It's definitely got John Tucker Must Die meets Halloween Town vibes which I really really appreciated and it's got a competition involved in it and what I love about this is that the main character is not actually involved in the competition. Like she's not a competitor. She is actually supposed to be more of a third party individual. Like she's a judge of sorts. And I really appreciated that because I feel like with every competition story, your main character is in the competition. You don't really get to see them outside of that. And so I really appreciated how this story, it made more sense to have the main character be a judge as opposed to a competitor, which I just, I thought that was so refreshing. Next was my one and only read for the Wheel of D20 this month, which was Internment by Samira Ahmed. This was for the prompt of a book with gray in the cover. This is a YA contemporary that actually was my first not five star of the month. This ended up being a four star. And this basically goes into the story of a young girl who her family is taken into an internment camp following the election of 
basically a president who is coded to be President Trump. It is very, very obvious. Um, I do have an entire video that is dedicated to this book, though, in terms of my thoughts on it and in terms of the content that's involved in it. So if you would like to hear my more in-depth thoughts on this, go and watch that video. The next book I ended up reading was my N.K. Jemisin read for the month, which was The Awakened Kingdoms by N.K. Jemisin. This is the novella spin-off that basically takes place years after the events of The Kingdom of Gods. This is the final installment essentially in the Inheritance series. This is like a spin-off, I guess a novella. I liked this. I really liked the character of Shill. I thought that it was very fun and reminded me a lot of why I really liked uh, Sia in the first place in the very first book in the Inheritance trilogy. Um, but I will say that I feel like there wasn't much of a point to this. And again, I do have a video that does go more into this one because it was my N.K. Jemison read for the month, but I did end up giving it a four out of five stars. And if you want to hear more information about what I thought about this in particular, please go watch that video. The next book I ended up reading was Parable of the Talents by Octavia E. Butler. The second book in the Parable of the Sower duology by Octavia. This was for the Octavia E. Butler read along that I've been participating in for uh, the fact that my friend Brie is hosting it with her friend Maya. I liked this. I don't think I liked it as much as I liked book one in this duology, but I thought this was really interesting because this one not only has the main character in terms of what, who we saw in book one, but this is also being told basically through her daughter, which I was very, very surprised by. I was not expecting that to really be a forefront in this story. And I thought it was very interesting and such a very big contrast to what book one was. And so I did really appreciate that, but I did feel that this one was a lot slower than book one. I felt like I wasn't enjoying it nearly as much. And there were some things that I got very confused with the further the story went. So Overall, it wasn't too bad though, and I did give it a four out of five stars. Next, I read the Zora Neale Hurston read for this month, which was Tell My Horse, which basically is Zora's account of going to Jamaica and various other um, black centered Caribbean countries where there is a lot of talk about voodoo and the community that is involved in especially like Jamaica and Haiti and essentially this story was just absolutely amazing. I loved learning everything that I could about especially in the time frame that Zora was living in going to these places and learning about what voodoo was at that time and what were some of the rituals and having like the actual written account of how some of these rituals went about and why they did them and what was a very significant about each piece of the ritual and how the community itself felt about it and then the political structure that there was in, in this time frame and how that affected things like voodoo was absolutely fascinating. I just feel like that the history, the magic within all of this was absolutely beautiful. The next book was Brandy's book club pick for her membership book club which was Sing Me to Sleep by Gabby Burton. Another five star this month. This book was absolutely beautiful. Like, I adore the, ma the main love interest, Hayes. He is so, so beautifully done. This is very much inspired by The Little Mermaid, but the thing is, is that this main character in this story is a siren. And she basically decides that she wants to use her ability to further her means and unfortunately that is because she is trying to protect her sister and essentially there's this job that is going to help her that she decides she doesn't really want to do because it's going to risk her secret of being a siren uh, come out because apparently sirens are illegal in this world um, and it's got very much that little mermaid coded kind of I think vibe because the character of Hayes is a high fey prince who hires uh, the main character Sersha who essentially um, is to be his one of his bodyguards and she starts to really have a hard time figuring out who is more important in her life because obviously her sister is like the most important thing to her in the world but then she starts to develop feelings for Hayes and so then it becomes this big back and forth of who is more important to her and what is she willing to risk to protect those that she loves and I absolutely love this from beginning to end, Sersha is one of my more favorite characters. I love how this is a story where right off the bat we see she is morally gray. She is not necessarily like a goody two-shoes. She has been 
through it. She has blood on her hands, literally and figuratively. And she is vying for a chance to just do what she needs to, to protect those she loves. And I just, I love it absolutely wonderful. And then finally, my last five star read for this month, but not my final read for the month, just the final five star one, the ending of the Girls of Paper and Fire series, which was Girls of Fate and Fury by Natasha Nong. I love this so much. I'm so sad now that this is over, but I honestly feel like this trilogy with how fast I flew through it is a series I will just binge over and over and over because I loved this series so much. I love the characters. I love Ren and Lei. I just feel like this series is like a comfort series now for me, even though I've only read it the one time. I just, I, I don't know what it is about this series, but this series just made such a huge space in my heart that I feel like I will just constantly read and reread and reread this series when I feel you know, like I need to, like this is one of those series I feel like I would want to read maybe like once a year kind of thing if I didn't have anything else to read or if I needed like a quick comfort reread of, of sorts. I just, I love this and I'm so sad it's over and I wish that there was more involved in this world because I think it was absolutely beautiful. The ending of this was so great and I was thrown so many different directions with how the story went, with people dying left, right, and center. I just, Oh, I love this series so much. Unfortunately though, my very last read for the end of July was a two star. And that was The Whispering Dark by Kelly Andrew. This was the full moon book club read for the month of July for Jan Agaton's Patreon group. I was so bored throughout this. I don't know why I stuck with it and finished it. Um, I really just wanted to see it through the end. And honestly, I, I don't really know what happened. I don't know what I was supposed to care about. I did not like the main love interest in this. I found him to be incredibly creepy and just, I, I, I didn't like this. I really didn't. I don't think this was for me. Um, Dark Academia has a, like a hit or miss thing for me in particular, but this one was just so weird and bizarre. And I think that it had a lot of good elements by themselves, but my biggest problem was really Colton. I didn't like him from the beginning. His creepiness factor just took over this entire story for me and I could not get past it to even remotely enjoy anything else in this story. I just, he really, really did not sit well with me. I don't care how well-intentioned he was supposed to be. I don't care how romantic his character was supposed to be in this story. He was freaking creepy. I, I don't like him at all. But without further ado, those are all of the books I ended up reading in the month of July. Let me know what you guys ended up reading in the month and whether you had much better success than I did. I'm pretty stoked though that over half of the reads I had were five stars and I'm very excited to see how my picks for August go because I have a lot more books to read and I'm hoping that I have a lot more books that I'm going to enjoy. And I really hope I don't end up on a sour note like I did in July with a two star at the end of the month. But say la vie, it is what it is. We live and we learn, we move on. So anyway, thank you guys so much for joining me in this video. If you guys did enjoy it, please do give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already and you'd like to be and would like to see more content like this, go ahead and hit that button down below and subscribe to become an owlette in our flock. And I will see all of you guys in my next video. Bye guys.